Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and today we're gonna do something kind of insane. We're gonna frag my big green bubble coral. Now the main reason we're gonna do that is over the years, this thing's grown huge, and now it's got two little heads or polyps growing at the back of it. One of those heads is growing into the return. It's starting to die and recede. And if we want to save it, cutting it is really our only answer. Here's my big green bubble. I've had this coral for about seven years. I bought it with one head and now it's three. So you have the big one right up front. So this is all one head. And then if you look towards the back, there's a little head here and behind it is another little head. Both of those heads used to have some skin attaching it, and while that was going on, I did not want to make the cut. Yes, it would be fine, but I did not want to risk the health of this coral. But we're at the point where the big mouth is kind of overgrowing, the two smaller ones, they're kind of running into some pallies on the side. Plus, I hate having all my eggs in one basket. This is by far my favorite coral in the tank, so we're gonna pull it and we're gonna frag it. And we're using the old Panasonic because this is dirty work. So what we're looking at is my bubble coral and it's huge. And before I cut it, what I'm really trying to do is get it to pull in. So I'm trying to get all of this water out of it basically. These are giant sacks of air, it's stressing it all out, but the more it's pulled in, the better it is for the cut. If I start cutting, I can damage the flesh and it's just not gonna be as good for it. I'd like to save all of this, so I'm just lightly disturbing the coral trying to get it to pull in. I mean, we're gonna split it, we're gonna hurt it, it sucks, but the more we can get it to pull in, the better. So, you can see here, we're already damaged on this edge right here. This is the reason we are wanting to cut this coral so bad. It's just not happy where it is. So that's what we're working on. I'm afraid we've already damaged it here. This is bad news. And here's the big bubble pretty much immediately after gluing it back in place. You can see these big pieces sticking up. That's because we have air stuck in it. It sucks. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it tore right here, it tore right there. This is not ideal, but working with a big bubble like this is super risky. If I was to do it again, I would have really worked harder to get those polyps pulled in before I pulled it out. Even then, I was trying to do it at the top of the tank and downstairs, and yet we still tore it. I felt like I was being careful. Bubbles are notorious for this. Big ones are even worse. And here's that big bubble the very next day. It's still looking a little bit raw. You can see a couple little air pockets still inside it. That really does worry me. But it is dramatically improved to what it looked like when we first put it up there. I think this coral is going to live. I think it's going to be healthy. But yeah, a little touch and go for a minute there. The healthy frag looks fantastic. It cut off. It looks like nothing happened to it. It's looking great in my little bubble garden. And here's that ugly head. So it had that hole in it. It still looks like there's a hole in it. Might be in a little bit high water flow, so I may end up moving it. But I think it's going to survive. I think it's going to be healthy. It's just going to take a while for it to heal. But that's why we cut it and why we moved it was to give this coral the best chance possible. Technically, it is possible to frag a bubble straight across the mouth. It can be done, 
They can survive. In fact, these things are way tougher than anybody gives them credit for. But if you do that, there's a good chance you're gonna kill it. In fact, the only way I would ever frag a bubble is between individual polyps, kind of like what you see happen here. This was one polyp, there was another polyp next to it that I cut. Even then, it's a bit riskier than I personally like to take it, but you can cut them like that. The real reason I would personally cut a bubble coral is, well, the reason I cut this one, and that's to save it. I purchased this one as a two-headed colony that was really rough. It had come in from Indonesia and it was beat to crap. I bought it next to nothing and brought it home with the hopes of saving it. After a couple days, the skin on this top polyp started to peel. So I cut the polyp in half. So basically I cut it in half. So one polyp was over here. This polyp was over here. This polyp was dead once I cut it. The other polyp, it was really rough. It was dying, but I cut it and that was enough to stop the spread of the disease. In fact, let's take a look at that polyp now. And here it is. You can see it's super rough. The top right has some actual bubble tissue growth on it, but that's all this coral needs to come back. If you look at the top, that's where I cut it. That's where I stopped the recession. I saved this coral by cutting it and then giving it an iodine dip. It may have done it on its own, but I have found with large LPS that if you wanna save them, Cutting them is always a great bet. In this case, it looks ugly, it looks rough, but once we give it enough time, I think it'll come back. And I think it'll be a beautiful pearl cat's eye someday. So really, in my opinion, fragging bubbles is only to help with the coral's health. There are opportunities for fragging individual polyps off if the colony is getting too big. I have done that successfully, but it is a bit risky. If you're gonna do that, make sure you give the coral a good iodine dip to make sure you get rid of any infections that could go along with it. And yeah, that little guy there, I gave it a really solid iodine dip after cutting it. It has a great shot at coming back. The big green one, it's gonna be better than ever. And the little one I tried to save, well, Fingers crossed. It's still a little rough, but you know what? That's all it takes. A rough bubble can be a beautiful bubble again. It just takes time. But honestly, don't frag one unless you're trying to save it or you have individual polyps. And even then, recognize that risk. So thanks for watching. This episode of Mile High Reefers, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.